Welcome to English Literature A-Level. We are delighted that you are considering this as one of your possible A-Level options. During the course of this short presentation, we hope to outline the course, answer some of the questions you may have, and to give you a taste of some of the content of the course. There will be an opportunity for you to submit individual questions for us to answer too. So, what does the course involve? A-Level English Literature is assessed by 80% exam and 20% coursework. The content of the exam papers is outlined here for you and includes the set texts that you will study. As you will see, there is a range of poetry, plays and prose. There are writers who will be familiar to you from your GCSE studies, such as Shakespeare, but also earlier writers, such as Chaucer, and more modern texts, such as The Bloody Chamber and other stories. You will be asked to compare these texts whilst considering their characters and themes in relation to their different contexts. One element that is different from GCSE English literature is that the exams are longer and build in 15 minutes planning time per essay, which means that you will have more time to consider your responses. For the coursework element, there is an exciting opportunity to follow your own reading interests. You will choose a poem to analyse closely from a collection of poetry. Currently, we use Thomas Hardy's poems of 1912 to 1913 and focus on your own choice of theme. For the comparative element, you will compare a 20th century play to a 21st century novel. One exciting difference from GCSE is that we can study American literature, plus novels that were written in your lifetimes. Currently, we teach A Streetcar Named Desire for the play and give our students a choice of which novel to focus on out of Americana, A Thousand Splendid Sons and All the Light We Cannot See. As with the poetry coursework, students choose their own topic to write about. Past examples of themes have included identity, female subjugation and sexuality. One question that we are frequently asked is how is A-Level different from GCSE? A-Level literature has some similarities to GCSE literature, as you can see from the assessment objectives. AO1, 2 and 3 have the same content as at GCSE, albeit at a higher level. For AO1, developing your own interpretations and individual essay style assumes more importance. In terms of AO2, your analysis will be more sophisticated. AO3 holds greater value than at GCSE, and part of the enjoyment of the course is the opportunity to explore the historical, social, biographical and literary context of the writers we study. AO4 is a comparison objective, which is a skill we practice through the study of poetry at GCSE. The new objective for us is AO5, which is where we consider alternative interpretations of texts. These could be film or theatre adaptations, critics' opinions, or schools of thought such as feminism. This is a visual example of what I mean by alternative perspectives. What do you see when you look at this image? Pause to look at it carefully. Some people see a girl, and some see a much older woman. If you can only see the girl, focus on her chin and see if you can see the nose of the older woman. Equally, if you can only see the old woman, look at her eye and the bump on her nose to see if you can make out the ear and nose of the girl. How does seeing both perspectives make you feel about the picture as a whole? Go on to the next slide to see another example. What do you see in this picture? Pause to look at it carefully. Do you see a woman reading or the profile of a bearded man? If you can just see the woman reading, focus on her hat and elbow and see if you can see an eye and a nose. If you can only see the man's profile, look at his moustache and beard to see if you can see the woman's arm and skirt. Do these different perspectives alter the way you see the whole image? These images are relevant for both AO1 and AO5. It is important to develop our own personal responses, but also to recognise that there are different views and perspectives that we can explore and consider alongside our own. I hope that considering these images has provided an example of this. 
As part of AO5, as I said earlier, we consider different schools of thought or criticism, such as feminism. Another type of literary criticism is structuralism, where we look at a text in terms of its place within one or more genres, and also in terms of how it relates to other texts. One genre of texts that we will study as part of A-level English literature is the Gothic. Can you pause the video and see which Gothic conventions you can think of? One example could be use of darkness. Here are just some examples of Gothic conventions you could have thought of. We will consider these and others in much more depth over the course of studying A-level English literature. For now, we will apply these features to the extract we will consider today. We are going to consider an extract from The Werewolf, a short story by Angela Carter. This is part of a collection of short stories called The Bloody Chamber and Other Stories, which is one of our set texts. The ten short stories are reimaginings of fairy tales and other traditional tales. The werewolf takes Little Red Riding Hood as its starting point. In our look at the extract today, I would first of all like you to focus on Gothic features and anything about Carter's use of language, structure and form that you find interesting. Please pause the video so that you can read this extract through a couple of times, picking out Gothic features and interesting language, structure and form points. For reference, naïf, as used here, means simple, and Walpurgisnacht is a northern European festival which bears a resemblance to Halloween, as some of the traditions are intended to ward off evil spirits. Let's consider some of the elements we could comment on here. These highlighted sections are examples and not an exhaustive list. It is fine if you picked other features. This is just part of you forming your own response. Let's look at Gothic features first. Cold, tempest, wild beasts in the forest uses listing to emphasise the presence and danger of a number of Gothic features, hostile weather conditions, non-human creatures and the potentially claustrophobic environment of a forest. In A Guttering Candle, Carter uses the Gothic trope of uncertain light here as guttering suggests flickering. Sometimes uncertain light is less predictable and therefore more frightening than total darkness. In the declarative sentence, Devil holds picnics in the graveyards and invites the witches, Carter arguably uses supernatural beings to create and inspire fear, which is another significant Gothic feature. In Wreaths of Garlic on the Doors Keeps Out the Vampires, a blue-eyed child born feet first on the night of St John's Eve will have second sight. Carter refers to superstitions here, which again forms part of the process of creating fear in the reader and is therefore another Gothic trope. Now we can turn our attention to the writer's technique. First of all, we can see an example of pathetic fallacy where weather reflects mood in they have cold weather, they have cold hearts, showing the connection between environment and attitude. It is also an example of syntactic parallelism which is repetition of structure as opposed to individual words in the phrase, they have cold. This syntactic parallelism once again affirms the link between environment and mood. Carter uses a declarative simple sentence in It is a hard life, which perhaps adds an authoritative and stark tone to her description. In a bed, a stool, a table, harsh, brief, poor lives. Carter uses elliptical, which are grammatically incomplete sentences, which focus the reader's attention on the stark nature of the villagers' lives and the many gaps and hardships that they endure. Additionally, Carter uses first and second personal pronouns in you or I, which forms direct address to the reader and also a sense of inclusivity between the writer and reader. The extract finishes with a range of sentence types and listing forms, which have the cumulative effect of building to a climax, where the violence is expressed brutally and starkly in the final simple sentence.
When they discover a witch, some old woman whose cheeses ripen when her neighbours do not, another old woman whose black cat, ooh, sinister, follows her about all the time, they strip the crone, search for her marks, for the supernumerary nipple her familiar sucks. They soon find it, then they stone her to death. You will notice that most of the points here refer to structural rather than linguistic devices. The unemotive tone of the writing, which uses little in the way of literary devices, could be said to contribute to the relentless nature of the conditions described. Read through this information about Carter and the society she was writing in. This is an example of the material we would use to explore context for assessment objective three. When we explore context for AO3, it is important to be able to link this knowledge to precise moments of the text. Therefore, please pause the video so that you can reread the extract to see if you can find a section that will support the contextual point about Carter and her society. On this screen, we can see the sentence in purple which we considered before. That is, when they discover a witch, some old woman, whose cheeses ripen when her neighbours do not, another old woman, whose black cat, ooh, sinister, follows her about all the time, they strip the crone, search for her marks, for the supernumerary nipple her familiar sucks. We could argue that the use of excla the exclamative, ooh, sinister, is ironic, and perhaps mocks such stereotypical superstition, which would be a modern or educated response to such beliefs. When we consider the repeated noun phrase, old woman, with its connotation of vulnerability, we can perhaps perceive a sympathy for, rather than a fear of, these characters, which might come with a more modern view and greater education. In a link to AO5, Alternative Readings, we could also consider a feminist perspective. Perhaps these so-called witches are persecuted because of their gender. These are the texts which we will study in the first half of Year 12, beginning with An Ideal Husband and Frankenstein. Whilst we will go through these texts in class, you may find it interesting and helpful to begin reading them in advance. Please note the other book suggestions which will help you develop a wider understanding of Gothic literature. If you have any questions about your reading, please do contact us. We hope that this has given you a taste of what to expect in English Literature A-Level and the level of analysis which you will be required to develop. It's a fascinating subject and one which you are sure to enjoy. To finish, here are some students talking about their experiences of the course. Please submit any questions that you may have. Hi, my name's Emily and I'm currently studying Fine Art and Design at Lancaster University. My favourite thing about doing English Literature for A-Level was probably like the really um, energetic class discussions that we used to have about the text or characters of the text, which could often turn into a form of debate. But they were very interesting and funny and um, made reading the text and understanding the text a lot easier and more fun. The most valuable thing for me about taking English literature was the skills that it's given me in essay writing. Um, it was transferable both at A level and now because I took history at A level as well. So that was really beneficial for writing essays in history. And now when I'm writing essays for my degree on art history, I am finding approaching an essay a lot less daunting because um, you're given the structure and the criteria at the A-level a that you can then transfer for other essays and just in general so it's really helpful. Um, it's also really helpful for like EPQ if you do that um, during your A-levels because it gives you all those fundamental skills and it's all fun while you're doing it at the same time as well. Hi, I'm Jess. Um, I did my English A-level in 2019 and I'm now at the University of Exeter studying English. 
Um, I felt like the A-level really reignited my passion for English and reading and analysing because I felt that GCSEs kind of crushed the fun out of that a bit. Um, but A-levels really brought that back for me. Um, I really enjoyed the use of different teaching methods across my teachers. So not only would we sit down and read texts and take parts and kind of analyse texts, it was also a lot of getting up and writing essay plans in groups and writing mind maps together and using memory games to remember quotes and all of that sort of thing. And I found that really, really interesting and also really, really helpful in learning the topics. Um, I loved the welcoming nature of the teachers and that's part of the reason I took the A-level in Hearts and Essex in the first place was just because of how lovely the English department were. They helped me write my personal statement for uni and they were just absolutely amazing at everything. They just really helped and honestly throughout A-levels I wasn't sure that I would do quite as well as I would um, as I did in my English but through a lot of their help it was um, great that I could kind of make myself better and do so much better in my A-levels than I ever thought I could. Um, I'm now doing English at uni, as I said, and I do have the Hearts and Essex A-level um, teachers to thank for that because they kind of gave me back that passion, as I was saying, and also gave me the confidence to know that I can write a good essay and I do love English like I always thought I had. Um, if you do want to take it, there are a few things that you do need to know and I'm going to give them to you um, that I found quite hard. You do need to read the texts and at times it feels like a lot of reading. Trust me, it's not that bad um, and you do need to read them and it sounds like a place of hindsight and it is because I didn't do all of the reading and it really did come back to bite me, but you definitely should and all of the texts are so interesting, so you definitely should. Um, also, be prepared to rewrite essays because you won't get it right first time. And rewriting essays and getting them marked again and again and again, that's what's gonna get you the good grades and that's gonna help you pass. Some people are naturally talented in writing essays and you have to remember that the whole way through. You're not always gonna be the best at writing essays. I never was, but you have to have the faith in yourself to know that you are gonna pass and you are gonna do really well and the teachers aren't gonna let you fall. And just know that you are gonna enjoy the subject even if you're having your doubts and you're like, oh, I don't know whether to take English or not, do it. <laughs> Firstly, because it's just such an amazing, amazing course and the teachers are all so fabulous and you are just going to love it. Even if you have your doubts, you know, I know that you will love it because I had my doubts and here I am now doing English at university and loving every second of it. And as I say, that is completely down to the teachers that I had at A-level. So, yeah. Hi, Thanks. my name's Ella and I studied both English Literature and English Language at A-Level. I particularly enjoyed English Literature at A-Level um, due to the fact that English Literature has always been my favourite topic throughout the time that I was at secondary school through years 7 to 11. Um, I've always loved reading and I really enjoy learning about context and themes um, of a book. Um, I'd say that my favourite topic um, during English literature, during the whole course, was most likely the Gothic, um, due to the fact that I really enjoyed the books that were chosen for my class, which were Frankenstein and the Bloody Chamber. Um, I just found not only that the books were really engaging and I enjoyed reading them, but that the context and the themes associated with both of them could still easily be applicable to kind of society today 21st century society which I always think helps you kind of understand and get a real sense of what's going on in the book and how you can really achieve the higher grades um, during your exams um, I would say that the topic that I probably struggled with the most was looking at the Chaucer text um, due to the fact that I think I'd never studied a text from that time period in such detail before um however the teacher that i had mrs curtis she made the text so much more enjoyable and easy to understand um and made it seem not impossible i think when you first read it you will think i will not be able to understand this but the teachers at hearts in essex make sure that they make the text approachable and easy to understand for the whole class. You don't ever leave thinking, 
you know, I really don't understand what's going on. And if you don't understand, all of the English teachers at Hearts in Essex are just so, you know, welcoming and just genuine that they will help with everything um, and support you all the way through to the exams, which was something that I really um, enjoyed and found really helpful for me. Um, I will say that if you are to pick English literature, yes, you do need to enjoy reading because there is a fair bit of it. But you will just enjoy the the topics. It, it's just so interesting and such a rewarding subject, I think, as well to take. And it really helped fit in with the other subjects I took. Um, so as I mentioned previously, I also studied English language. But I also studied history alongside those two and just the way that learning about the context and the, the history of the books that was going on in the time period that the books were written and like the the language techniques that you pick up during the subject you can apply to English language or you can apply to history or I have friends that took media um, or psychology or sociology which also interlinked really well um, so yeah I definitely say that I would 100% recommend English literature to anybody who's thinking of taking it you will 100% enjoy it um yeah i hope you're all staying safe during this lockdown and that this video has been some help to you to help you decide um yeah